What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.5 developer beta 1. So this comes just one week after the release of iOS 14.4 and this update is going to be a pretty major release for a few reasons and I'll discuss that here in a moment. But this is out for developers now and soon to public beta testers and along with iOS 14.5 beta 1, we also got iPadOS 14.5 beta 1 watchOS 7.4 beta 2, tvOS 14.5 beta 1, and macOS Big Sur 11.2, the final release. But of course, in this video, we're just gonna be covering what's new in iOS and iPadOS 14.5. So let's kick things off with the size of this update. So you can see here, of course, we went from a public release to a first beta, so the size is always going to be pretty large. You can see here it came in at 4.62 gigabytes, on my iPhone 12 Pro, and the size, of course, will vary depending on your device and the version you are coming from. But let's go and check out the build number for this update in our settings general about 14.5. You can see the build number here for beta one is 18E5140J. So we do have a J at the end of the build number, which does indicate we have at least a few more betas to go as expected of 14.5. Scroll down a little bit further to the modem firmware, you can see we do also get an update to the modem here as well. It's now 1.57.02. So now what's new in iOS 14.5 beta 1? And the first thing is going to be the biggest feature, the major feature in iOS 14.5 that has been talked about for months now, and that is the app tracking transparency feature. So if we go into our settings here and then go down to privacy and then to tracking, we have this right here, which says allow apps to request to track. And you'll notice now in 14.5, we have different verbiage down here. So on 14.4, it was a little bit different, but now it shows you right here what it does. Allow apps to ask to track your activity across other companies, apps, and websites. So what Apple is doing is they're requiring app developers to ask for permission before they can track you across other apps and websites. So right now, app developers get access to your IDFA, which is the advertising identifier. And with that, they are able to track your activity across different apps and websites to basically better understand what you're interested in so that they can serve higher quality ads to you. And Facebook is by far the most notorious for having ads pop up like right after you visit a site or after you, you know, do something in a certain app but now it won't be so easy for them and others to collect that data. So when 14.5 gets released, you're gonna see a pop-up like this when you open up an application like Facebook, and it's going to say, you know, Facebook, for example, would like to track you across other apps and websites, and then you can choose whether or not you want them to track you or not. So that is definitely going to be the biggest feature in 14.5. There are a ton of other changes, but that's going to be the main one that makes headlines and we're going to see how big of a difference that actually makes with time. But obviously that's been, you know, the center of attention with the whole Apple versus Facebook dilemma over the past couple of months. So that is the first change in 14.5. Now the next one has to do with the Apple watch and face ID. So in 14.5, you're able to now unlock your iPhone while wearing a mask if you have an unlocked Apple Watch on your wrist. So this is an extremely useful feature and I was waiting for Apple to release something like this. So if we go into our settings here and we go to Face ID and Passcode and put in our passcode right there, if we scroll down, you will see Unlock with Apple Watch. And it says, iPhone can use your Apple Watch to unlock when Face ID detects a face with a mask. Your Apple Watch must be nearby on your wrist, unlocked and protected by a passcode. So right now I do not have a passcode on my Apple Watch and I'm actually required to, to enable this feature. So if we go ahead and enable that, you can see this is what it says, passcode required. You can create a passcode in the Apple Watch app. If I tap on open, it will take me straight to the passcode screen here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna make zeros. So I just did zeros right there. We'll just use that code. And I wanna test this out with a mask on. Okay, so I have a mask on, as you can probably tell by my voice. So we're gonna go ahead and enable this feature now. It does not enable automatically after you set a passcode, just FYI. So now that that's enabled, we're gonna go ahead and unlock our phone with a mask on because we have our Apple Watch on. So let's try this. There we go, it unlocked. So I do have a mask on, it's, you know, I'll just show you the front facing camera so you can see full mask on as you can see right there. And we're gonna go ahead and try that one more time. My Apple Watch is just here on my wrist. We're going to unlock and we get a little haptic feedback and it actually shows us that we unlocked our phone right there. So let me show you that notification once again. You can see that's the notification we get. So super, super cool. This is going to be extremely handy here in 2021 while we're still all 
wearing masks. Now, if we go back into our settings, there's another pretty notable change here in iOS 14.5. So if you go to general and software updates, you'll notice we have a new screen here. So it shows a green check mark saying iOS 14.5. Your iPhone is up to date with all the latest bug fixes and security enhancements. Then it shows the last time it was checked. So if we compare that to previous, this is how it looked on previous versions of iOS since I mean, ever since I can remember, you can see this is what it looked like before. It just said the update version and your software is up to date. So now it just looks a lot better, a lot more modern. And you can see it shows off for automatic updates there as well, instead of just showing, you know, a little arrow. So a nice change there for the software update screen in 14.5. Now, speaking of redesigns, we also have a slightly redesigned podcast application and a completely redesigned podcast page. So first off, let's go to the search tab over here and you'll see the first difference. So we have these squares now where you can browse categories, which is great. And this resembles the TV application a little bit. It's very similar to that. Before on 14.4 over here on the left, we just kind of had a blank thing and you had to search for something before you saw anything. But the big difference is going to come on the actual podcast page. So when you go to a podcast, this is what it looks like now in 14.4. So much better than the outdated looking 14.4 and previous versions of iOS, the podcast application. So, and now more so resembles like Apple Music. And we have, I mean, just look at the play buttons there, the time remaining, everything just stands out so much easier on the eyes, like so much more modern. You can see the sticky menu at the top, it shows with the download button up there. So many changes here in the podcast app. And I just love this change a lot, especially since I use the podcast app every single day. We also finally get PS5 and Xbox Series X controller support in 14.5. So I've been testing this ever since the PS5 and Xbox Series X have been released, but now we finally have support. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in pairing mode so you guys can see that it does actually connect. So before it would just never even show up on iOS 14.4 or any other previous version. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in its pairing mode here and I'll show you guys how this works. So there we go, we have DualSense wireless controller. I can tap on that and you can see it actually connects. So this never even showed up before on any previous version of iOS, but now it not only shows up, but it also connects, which is really nice. And now you can enjoy that on games that support controllers. Another new feature that we finally get in 14.5 is 5G dual SIM support. So now if you have an eSIM, you can also get 5G on that in addition to your physical SIM. So you now have access to 5G on both SIM cards, which is a feature we've been waiting on ever since the iPhone 12s were announced. We also now get Siri support for emergency SOS. So you can now ask Siri to call emergency support, which can be nice. Another new feature in iOS 14.5 is the ability to cast Apple Fitness Plus workouts to your AirPlay 2 enabled TV. So I do have a TV with AirPlay 2, so I am able to cast this to my TV. So if we go ahead to end workout here, if we tap on let's go, you will see down here in the bottom right, we now have the option to AirPlay and it can connect to our TV. So my TV is not on, but if it was, I can do that and I can now cast my workouts to the TV. Now, the only con to doing this is that your rings and your metrics will not be displayed on the screen. So you'll have to use like your Apple Watch for looking at that, which is a con, but it's still nice that you can now cast these workouts to your TV. Also inside of the music application, we now have a section for made for you. So you can see it's right there. For some reason, mine does not appear even though I have it checked but we do now have the section for made for you, which is nice if you have Apple Music. Another new feature in iOS 14.5 that was revealed in the code by 9to5Mac is the upcoming Apple Card family feature for multi-user accounts. So basically if you have you know, an Apple Card and you have a family, you have family members, you can actually invite them to share your card and you're gonna be able to track everyone's spending in the wallet application. So it does this through iCloud family sharing. And of course, it's going to be great if you have like kids and you want to monitor their spending, they're gonna be able to use your Apple card and you'll be able to see every transaction that they've done inside the wallet application. So this is not available yet. It was just in the code for 14.5, but that is a pretty cool feature coming 
in this update. So there are a lot of new features and changes in this update, and I'm sure I did not cover every single one of them. So of course, stay tuned as always for my follow-up video coming this weekend, because I'll most likely find even more new features and changes in this update. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels about the same to me so far. I've not really noticed any difference at all going from 14.4 to 14.5 beta one. Now I did not have the stutter when you go into an application and then out of it, like going back to the home screen, I never had that. So I can't tell if that's been fixed or not, but you guys can let me know. That was of course the main complaint was the stutter when going from an application back to the home screen, but I don't have any stutter here on 14.5. So let me know if that's been fixed for you. However, I did want to run a quick Geekbench test to see how the scores compare to iOS 14.4 the final version. So there we go. We got a 1579 single core score and a 3894 multi-core score. So that is slightly lower than 14.4, which you can see right under it, the results there. 1579 versus 1591 and 3894 versus 4025. So slightly lower, but of course we'll see if that actually makes a difference in day-to-day -day usage. I will talk about that in my upcoming follow-up video this weekend. I'll talk about iOS and also iPad OS. Now, as far as battery life, of course, it's way too early to tell anything with battery life. However, the battery life on 14.4 was the same as 14.3. So 14.5, given the fact that we have more new features and changes, a lot more than 14.4, we could see a difference in battery life, but that is yet to be determined. I've not used this long enough to be able to tell you guys, but stay tuned for my follow-up video. I will talk extensively about the battery life. So now when can we expect to see the next beta of 14.5? So it's hard to say right now if Apple's going to stick to a one week or a two week cycle, but given the fact that this released in early February and we're not expected to see 14.5 until mid March, I would guess that we're on a two week cycle right now. So maybe the week of the 15th is when we could see beta two. However, you never know. I mean, if we're gonna have multiple betas, it could be next week on the 8th. So it's really hard to say at this point, and I would expect the final version to come out in mid to late March because Apple did mention that this will be released in early spring and spring is not until I believe March 20th. So, you know, nearing the end of March is when I would expect that. So that would put us probably on a two week cycle for betas. But of course, who knows? It could be one week. Apple is just really unpredictable at this point in time. So just stay tuned to my Twitter. And of course, I will update you guys here on YouTube as well when those updates get released. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.5 beta one, a lot of new features, some pretty important new features as well. And I'm really excited to use this over the next week. So let me know what you guys think about this update down in the comments below. And if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my follow up video coming this weekend, where I'll talk about more features, the battery life, the performance, and all of that good stuff. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.